Hey, I'm Markia. Want to hear something scary? Right like knives. My friend Denny and I had just finished 12 straight hours of karaoke at three different venues across Los Angeles. I felt like I'd run a kind of spiritual marathon. That's when my stomach rumbled and I recommended grabbing some food. Denny coolly agreed as he fiddled with his phone, but I could see exhaustion creeping across his face. I drove on towards the discount diner, idly taking notice of the couple of turns the GPS asked me to take. When I looked up, I was surprised when I'd found myself on a stretch of road wholly unfamiliar to me. The long stretch was four lanes wide and dotted by street lamps on the passenger side every half block or so. In the moonless night, the lights made the road look like a hallway of shadow, punctuated by cones of orange-yellow light. With each street lamp passed, I grew increasingly uneasy about being the only car on that sparsely lit stretch of road. No headlights ahead or behind. And if it wasn't for Denny sitting next to me, I might have actually been scared. But that was before I saw it. Coming up in the distance, less than a mile away, I noticed the black outline of a person shuffling slowly across the road. The shape moved along the dark space between two street lamps, but I could see their silhouette shambling. I narrowed my eyes and turned to attention, observing the shape's slow walk, realizing it looked more and more erratic. The deep shadow it was in made it hard to tell much, but the limbs, they didn't move right. Its arms waved in slow arcs, up then down, first one, then the other. Its legs didn't step one after another, more like joining together, then separating apart. A slow chill crept up the back of my neck and spread across my shoulders in icy waves. Both hands tightened the wheel, trying to push back the goose flesh spreading down my arms. Then I dropped my speed to a near crawl without realizing. What's up, Denny said. I need to slow down or else I might hit this dude on the road, I said. Denny finally looked at the road and set up. What do you mean? Wait, who's that and what's he doing? As the car lights washed up on the figure's feet, I could see normal sneakers, but they were pointed away from us. Then I could see they were doing a kind of sideways crab walk, legs joining together before taking another step and long exaggerated arcs. But if this person could sense a car approaching from either the headlights coming towards it or the approaching sound of the engine, they gave no notice. The figure kept its steady shuffle all while facing away from us. The car's lights rose to the shape's torso as it continued to flail its arms with each step, up and down like languid snakes. Unable to take my eyes off the shape now, the car lights fully put it into view. Who the hell is this person? Denny's voice dropped to a whisper. It was then, as if it heard us talking, the shape raised up both its arms, forming a halo around its upper body, and in one fluid turn, picked up its right leg and swung around in mechanical pirouette, like a jewelry box ballerina. With this motion, it turned to face us. My arms locked and my hands gripped as if to choke the wheel. I felt myself veering into the next lane, trying to give it a wide berth. And for only a second, the car's headlight glow had made its face visible in spite of the night. Teeth, it's all teeth. My mind reeled, razor thin lips parted and turned up at the corners to show a perfect set of teeth locked into a menacing smile. Each tooth, incisor to canine, broke through the night and somehow shone bright, reflecting the light like knives against the dark. And though I was transfixed by this impossibly big smile, my mind scanned the grin for something that would reveal the figure's intentions. As we passed it on the right, I struggled with what else I saw. Above the all-too-big grin, past a nondescript nose to lock on its eyes. In place of normal eyes, twin black pools stared back at mine, as if each pupil had overflowed, spreading its darkness to the corners of its eyelids, threatening to spill even beyond that. They shimmered with the orange light of the street lamps. I had stopped completely. When had I put my foot down on the brake? When had I turned off the car for that matter? I could only stare at my hands, also clenched fists, strangling the wheel. And as if underwater, I heard muffled cries next to me. Was Denny yelling at me? 
Unlock door. Is what I thought I heard, but it was dampened, as if shouted from inside a giant fish tank. My ears followed the sound of a softly rapping knuckle against the driver's side window. And as I looked up to my left, I saw the final street lamp's light. And if somehow darkness could glow, that's exactly what the shape's eyes did. The dark pools I had dared to look into hovered on the other side of the glass and they expanded overflowing beyond the natural shapes of eyes, almost gulping the final light. And the last thing I remember was teeth, perfect teeth and a giant humorless smile. A police siren's scream startled me awake. Red and blue flashing lights shone bright in the breaking dawn. Regaining consciousness, I felt as if I'd been dragged out of a lake. But then I realized it was my own sweat that had drenched my clothes. I was still on the road, still in the car. That's when I looked over to the passenger side. The door was nearly pulled off its hinge. Its metal frame slightly warped and pulled back as if peeled. Broken glass sparkled where Denny had sat, but the chair was empty. In its place, jagged glass glinted like cheap diamonds and pooled between the broken pieces in the seat and on the floor mat was caked blood. It collected in small crimson puddles with an ominous smear trailing out of the car onto the road, then disappearing entirely merely feet away. I never saw Denny again, not as he was at least. No, but there have been a couple of nights since, times when the guards had to force their way into my cell at an ungodly hour and beat me unconscious just to get my screaming to stop that I think I've seen Denny. Through the barred window of my cell, at the edge of the sparse prison courtyard below, engulfed by the night. Yes, I think I've seen Denny, shambling oddly, and frozen on his face is a giant, perfect smile.